Hey guys, and today I'll be playing Diona's Flower Shop. And this game, we play as someone who's looking on the mission or hunt to look for the perfect request flowers. But unfortunately, they have to work a bit too late at night and all the shops are closed. And when they're about to give up on the idea, they come across a flower shop that's still open but a little odd. You're in search of the ideal request for that special event. In a hurry, I bolted out of my workplace and left in my wrist to check on the time. Shit. I had a feeling I'd be working overtime again tonight, but I didn't expect leaving work this late. My plan was to leave a little earlier tonight to spare some time browsing for flowers to buy, but now it's 11.15pm already. No shop must still be open by this hour. As I walked, the night enveloped the street in darkness and quiet. I was right, but I noticed that most shops are closed now. A hint of disappointment creeps in, realizing I won't have the chance to buy what I need for tomorrow. If only I had thrown caution to the wind and left earlier. But now I'm not sure any more anymore about tomorrow. Well, it's not like a getting a flower bouquet up for the occasion is that necessary, after all, but I still think it'd be a good idea to do so. It's just showing up with a bouquet in hand which show the effort I put in, right? At least that's what I think. I begin to walk slowly, realizing there's no point in hurrying anymore, since I must just must just go through tomorrow without a flower bouquet. Bouquet. I think I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> yeah, just as I was about to completely give up on the idea, something caught my attention, and I came to an abrupt stop. Yona's Flower Shop. Despite the late hours, the entrance to the shop still displayed a riot of blossoms. It was a little strange to see, yet its beauty draws me in like a moth to a flame. Either the florist is incredibly dedicated, or the shop ha simply has unusual working hours. But that doesn't matter now. This means I have a chance to buy flowers. <coughs> Eager, I hastened my step towards the shop and entered. The door chimed with a soft ring as I swung it open, announcing my arrival. The interior of the flower shop exudes a delicate beauty, with its simple yet elegant decor that consists of soft and muted colors. The blossoms neatly displayed in glass bases cast elongated, elongated shadows in the dim lighting. As I wandered to the flower shop, I could smell the scent of an unusual fragrance, floral notes in the air. But I also began to notice something else, something unsettling, far from the usual pleasantness. A faint, discordant order that mingles with the flowery scents, a scent different from what I expect in a flower shop that I couldn't quite place its origin either quickly dismissed it and chose to focus on the flower shop's exquisite arrangements instead, as if ignoring the scent will make it vanish somehow. I began observing the floral displays my eyes drifting over them. Some McCoy's were prearranged while others featured individual stems waiting to be selected. Taking a closer look, the late hour seems to have taken its toll on a few, leaving them with a slight wilt. Nonetheless, I feel grateful that this flower shop is still open at this hour. On the opposite side of the shop, a particular bouquet of sunflowers immediately captured my attention. They stood out with their vibrant freshness in stark contrast to the others. Wow, I whispered to myself, reaching out to gently touch the golden petals, a soft smile gracing my lips. This one's still quite fresh, surprisingly. Maybe I should get this one? Hmm. I mused again, hesitating. Yeah, I think I should look around first. Turning around from the sunflowers, I strolled further into the shop admiring the colorful array of blooms and pondering my choice. It wasn't until I stole a glance at the counter that I realized the shop was deserted. Where's the florist? Check the door stuff or wait around. Um... Let me just look around. Not sure what to do. I decided to just look around and wait for now. Maybe someone will show up soon. Venturing between the shelves, my eyes were drawn to an exquisite arrangement of lilies. Whoever arranged it had done such a meticulous job, and I found myself admiring the skillful work put into the booklet. Just as I thought of checking my watch, I was taken aback by the presence of a man with pink hair standing in front of me. Hello there. I apologize for making you wait. I was standing to something in the other room and didn't notice someone had entered the shop. Welcome to Diona's flower shop. I'm the florist in charge. How can I assist you? Yes, I'm here to buy some flowers for a special occasion. The man nodded and his smile broadens. Of course. What's the occasion, and what type of flower are you interested in? <laughs> oh, right off the bat. For confessions, my friend's birthday. I mean, 
I was implying that's kind of for a confession, so yeah. Well, I'm looking for some flowers for a special occasion. I wanted to confess my feelings to someone, so I thought flowers would be a perfect way to express it. Ah, how lovely. Flowers can convey emotions beautifully indeed. Is there any specific type of flower or color that you have in mind for this special occasion? I was thinking of roses. They say roses are the language of love, right? Absolutely. Roses are a timeless symbol of love and affection. You have a wonderful selection of roses in various colors. Red roses are classic choice for love, but other colors like pink, white, and yellow can also be beautiful options. I did not know there were yellow roses. If you like, I could also show you our flower language book. It's a way to choose flowers based on their meanings and symbolism. No thank you, I'm thinking I'm good with red roses. Red roses just sounds like a perfect flower for, my, for expressing my feelings. Of course, that's no problem at all. I'll arrange the book web for you. You can follow me and add any additional touches you might want later if you like. Thank you. I trail behind the floors, observing as he elegantly halted the steps and began crafting a floor arrangement at the nearby table. He began by selecting individual petals from a bunch, each movement deliberate and precise. Swiftly after, he picked up a pair of slender silver pruning shears from a nearby cabinet. He was a little awkward if I just stand here and watch him work. Maybe I should try and say something? Flowers here are beautiful. You really take good care of them. Thank you, it's always a pleasure to create something beautiful with nature's gifts. With the shears in his hand, he snipped the stems at just the right angle, the metallic blades glinting slightly in the flowers dropped dim lighting. Their edges appeared really sharp and maintained. As you may have noticed, a couple of them have started to wilt. I apologize for that. It's because I usually select the flowers during the day, and they don't remain fresh until late. I nodded in understanding, acknowledging the truth in his explanation. No worries, I completely understand. Flowers tend to deteriorate quickly once they're picked. I'm relieved to know so. It's indeed unfortunate that their beauty don't last very long. He held one of the blossoms up to the soft light, pausing mid-sentence as he momentarily inspected it for any imperfections. Satisfied, he chose another flower, balancing the two with a practiced eye and resuming speaking. I often wish that more individuals embrace nurturing flowers, but it appears many lean towards purchasing them slowly for decoration. People prefer to opt for the pre-arranged, hand-picked, and clean options. Yeah, your eyes is heartening to see beautiful flowers go to waste. Why is your flowers should remain open late? Well, at least I'm glad to see that someone as charming as you can for the flowers. Let's go for the first option. Yes, absolutely. Flowers possess this ability to bring joy and warmth to people's lives when tended to lovingly. Fortunately, not many people seem to grasp that. There was something sincere about the way he spoke of flowers and handled them, palpable in his actions. He must really love to work with flowers. My words brought a soft smile to the forest face, and he nodded. Thank you for the kind words. I do find great joy in creating arrangements that express one's beauty and emotions. He continued by picking up a handful of delicate baby's breath, tiny white flowers that added an airy lightness to the bouquet. Was there a specific reason behind your choice to become a florist? My love for flowers has been a life lifelong affair. Even as a child, I was captivated by their beauty and grace. But it was when I went my wife that my passion for flowers intensified greatly. His voice took on a noticeable change of tone as he spoke about his wife. Your wife's must the wife must hold a special place in your heart. With each nod, his smile grew to seem to grow wider. It is clear he's absolutely smitten with the topic of his wife. She is, and I'm thankful to be in her presence every single day. I nod softly, smiling at his words, and remain quiet to let him focus on his work. He missed his work. He suddenly paused, setting aside the shears and fixing his gaze on me. Excuse me for just a moment. I need to retrieve something from the other room. The floor smiled politely and left the counter. After a short absence, he returned carrying a small wooden box filled with decorative satin, satin ribbons and a handful of white lilies. Thank you for your patience. No problem at all. He continued with his work and thoughtfully dispersed the white petals throughout the bouquet, like pearls adorning a royal robe. Ugh. I apologize again. I just remembered I missed something. How forgetful of me. I'll be right back. Just one more thing to fetch. He disappeared into the staff room once more. Take your time. 
Just like this, the florist would frequently step away to the staff room in the midst of his work. Sometimes he returned with new equipment and the fresh blooms, while other times he reappeared with no apparent changes. Each time he opened the staff door, the peculiar smell grew more potent. Soon enough, the florist returned again with a roll of decorated paper. Thank you for waiting. No problem. Even though the door is closed now, his earlier trips to the staff room left a lingering scent in the shop. I instinctively scratched up my nose at the unpleasant odor. I think it's the smell from earlier. <laughs> what is with the flirting? Asked the florist about it. Ignore the smell. Maybe you ignore it. I mean, maybe just the shop just smells bad. It's not like he killed someone. Despite my intrigue, I decided to push the unusual scent to the back of my mind. As much as the aroma tugged at my curiosity, something tells me that it's probably best if I don't question it. While he placed each pedal with precision, I suddenly hear a loud crashing noise from the other room. For the first time since I walked into the flower shop, I see genuine shock on the floor of the face. What was that? Sounds like someone tripped over something. I apologize. I must go and take a look. Please excuse me for a moment. Okay. He looks genuinely concerned as he rushes towards the staff room, leaving me standing there. And again, he opened the door, and that scent lingers in the air again. It makes me question what's really behind that the closed door. And it was the scent of flowers, I wonder what kind of flower could possibly emit such a foul scent. After what feels like an eternity, the florist finally returns. The worry that was visible on his face earlier had dissipated, and he now wears a faint smile. Is everything okay back there? Seems my wife accidentally knocked over some gardening tools of mine. Nothing to worry about. She's just a little clumsy at times. He chuckles softly and swiftly picks up the flowers again, holding them in his hand as he started arranging again. I see. I stood still, patiently awaiting the flower arrangements to be done. Yet while I was looking around the table, I noticed a stain of blood on the end of the counter. Exactly the spot where the florist just touched. The floor seemed to have noticed me and noticing the blood spot. Uh, is there something that caught your attention? Nothing! I was just facing out. I like my life. Oh, nothing really. I was just facing out for a moment. His eyes, a deep shade of crimson, bore into me for a moment longer. As long as he's seeking something in my expression, before he eventually breaks the silence. I see. Well, if you have any questions about the flowers, feel free to ask. Flora's intense gaze made me wonder if he saw through my attempt to hide my unease. Quietly, I observed his fingers in motion. With every addition, the florist paused, the discerning eye ensuring each flower found its perfect place in the arrangement. Before long, the florist turned his head around to look at me. I apologize for making you wait. I'm almost done with the arrangement. Would you like to include a card with the booklet? Normally, there's an additional charge, but since you're buying our last batch of flowers, I'll include it at no extra cost. For free? Flores nodded again with a small smile on his face. Uh, yes. Thank you, I like the card, and I want a card I want you instead. I'll pass the offer. Yeah, I just like the card. Excellent choice. What would you like me to write on it? I think I like something like... I told the Flores why I like him to write word by word, and he writes them down. Thank you. Is this good enough for you? Handing me the bouquet of flowers he had arranged, adorned with a small card attached to the ribbon. Oh, he had a very pretty handwriting, and the arrangement looks just as beautiful. It's beautiful. I held onto the bouquet while tighter, looking up at the florist. Thank you so much. I'm glad you think so. Do you want to purchase something else before leaving, or is that all? Yes, that's all. I should get going. How much is this? Then everything will be blank. Okay. Let out a quiet sigh, pulling out my wallet and handing him the amount I need to pay for his service. He took the money and swiftly processed the payment. Here's a change. I nod, reaching out my hand to take the change. Thank you, also for the arrangement. I nod, reaching out my hand to take the change. Thank you for choosing the Yona's flower shop. We hope to see you again. Thanks as well. He picked up the bouquet from the counter, turning around to walk towards the door. We made it out with our lives. Despite the unease, I managed to politely bid my farewell and turn to leave. As I distanced myself from the shop, the unsettling scent slowly faded, and the surroundings became more familiar and comforting. Gradually, my heart rate began to return to normal, and the feeling of relief washed over me, escaping whatever strange ambience that flower shop held. 
ending Lily of the Valley. Amidst shadows and fragrant blooms, the discerning heart chose caution's tune, a fleeting scent, a whispered spell, led one to escape where shadows dwell. Sometimes, it's best to trust your instincts and not let your guard down. A simple choice to walk away can save you from the fate that's better left unexplored, right? Okay, here I am at the choice. Uh, I'm gonna check the staff door. I hesitate for a moment, pondering whether it might be a bit excessive. But in the end, curiosity got the better of me. After all, someone could be inside, right? I mean, who in their right mind would leave their own shop unattended at this hour? It's kind of dangerous. After a brief internal debate, I made my way towards the back of the counter, intending to knock the staff door. I noticed that odd, out-of-place scent from earlier seems to be coming from behind this door. I apologize, but only staff members are allowed to enter. I was taken aback by the sudden presence of a man with pink hair emerging from the staff door. Oh, sorry. I took a step back immediately, feeling a little flustered. No, you're quite alright. The man's lips curled upward into a smile that appeared to warm to me. I took a step back, maintaining a professional distance. I apologize for making a wait. I was tending to something in the other room and didn't know someone has entered the shop. Welcome to the owner's flower shop. I'm the florist in charge. How may I assist you? Okay, now we're here to buy some. So, I'm gonna go with the options you just straight up, um, just flirt with him, cause why not? Wow, you're hot. Pardon? Why the heck did I just work that out? Um, I tried to form a reply, but my thoughts scramble, leaving me tongue-tied and making nonsensical sounds, feeling utterly awkward. Why, I appreciate that. Flores gave a slight smile and reply, his voice hardly shifting. That only adds to my embarrassment. I cringe inwardly, wondering how I could have said something like that earlier. In any case, is there any type of flower you're interested in buying? Not really, nothing comes to mind yet. That's perfectly fine. If you like, I can show you our flower language book. It's a way to choose flowers based on your meaning and symbolism. Thank you, thank you, I really appreciate that. The florist swiftly retrieved the flower language book from a cabinet and handed it to me. I took it with a nod and a, smi a small smile. Thank you. The trail behind the floor is observing as he elegantly halted his steps and began crafting a floral arrangement at a nearby table. We chose already? Despite trying to focus on the task at hand, my mind kept replaying the awkward moment when I blurted out that thoughtless comment. Please browse at your leisure. I have to return to other another arrangement for a client, so whenever you made your choice, please let me know. Thank you so much, I'll definitely let you know. Trying to distract myself, I gazed at the beautiful assortment of flowers before me. While I was browsing, the florist was deep in concentration in his arrangement work. I started flipping through the pages of the flower language book, scanning the meanings and symbolism behind various blooms. Marigolds and red roses caught my attention. Marigolds, often associated with passion and creativity, seemed like a vibrant choice. On the other hand, red roses conveyed messages of love and admiration. I don't know which one to decide. After a moment of contemplation, I turned my attention towards the florist. With the shears in his hand, he sniffed the stems at just the right angle, the metallic blades glinting slightly in the flower shop's dim lighting. Their edges appeared really sharp and maintained. I don't want to bother him, but I also need to ask for his help in deciding. Um, excuse me? Yes? He paused his mo movements, anticipating my next words with a small smile on his face. I can't decide between marigolds or red roses. A tough decision indeed. Both choices are beautiful. Perhaps you can opt for the red roses? As much as I'd like to offer you both, I can't sell flowers that aren't in their best condition. As you may have noticed, a couple of them have started to wilt. I apologize for that. Because I usually select flowers during the day and they don't remain fresh until late. I nodded understanding, acknowledging the truth in his explanation. No worries, I completely understand. Flowers tend to deteriorate quickly once they're picked. I'm relieved to know so. It's indeed unfortunate that the beauty doesn't last very long. I often wish that more individuals embrace nurturing flowers, but it appears many lean towards purchasing them solely for decoration. I mean, you can purchase them for decoration and admire them, right? Well, we'll go for the third option. Well, at least I'm glad to see that someone as charming as you is taking care of these beautiful flowers. His lips curled into a small smile, his eyes beating mine briefly before his focus returned to his work. Thank you for your kind words, it's an honor. 
Flowers are really beautiful and delicate, thus I want to be able to enhance each flower's beauty by arranging them harmonically. Well, I think you're already doing a great job at it. Or is there a specific reason behind your choice to become a florist? Alright. I was caught up in the conversation. Red roses, yeah, but some miracles, and it would be great too. I don't mind if it's a bit bolted. Yeah, that's nice. Ah, uh, how thoughtful. He set aside the arrangement for another client after he tied the ribbon around it as it was as a finishing touch. If I may ask, what's the occasion? Um, I guess my friend's birthday? Well, it's my friend's birthday, and I want to surprise them with a beautiful booklet. Ah, how lovely. Flowers can convey the emotions beautifully, indeed. Okay, I'll begin prepping them for you. Thank you so much. I'm gonna ask him about the smell. Um... Oh wait, no. I'm supposed to flirt with him, that's right. You know, I must admit, your flowers aren't the only thing that's captivating around here. I tried to smile, hoping to divert my own attention from the unusual scent in the shop. Hmm? His glance, <laughs> his glance in my direction was accompanied by a smile that appeared somewhat contrived. It made me feel a little uneasy, as if he could discern my motives. Care to elaborate? Oh, I mean, it's just the flowers. Your presence adds a certain charm to this place, too. Is that so? You have a way with compliments. I call it as I see it. You must have many admirers. Ah, oh, you're flattering me. While you place each petal with precision, suddenly hear, oh yes, the loud crashing. He's like, oh, that's my wife. The blood. My voice trembles with concern as I gesture towards the blood stain. There's a strong urge in me that really wants to know what's happening. That blood, what happened? He pauses for a moment, his eyes briefly dart into the spot I was pointing at. Oh, I think I didn't probably knip after myself just now. He lets out a quiet sigh, rubbing his temple on his other hand. I apologize, I had a nosebleed just now. A nosebleed? Yes, it happens every now and then, unfortunately. Sometimes I do wonder if it's from me working a bit too hard, for I'm the only one who works here. Uh, do we really want to question him about his wife? How about your wife? Why is she helping you? You really need to look at yourself, handsome. <laughs> That's concerning you should remember to wear rest, it's not from a nosebleed. You know what, let's just do this. Flora seems completely focused on his arrangement, even that my words took a more flirtatious, flirtatious note. I appreciate your concern, but I'm used to it, really. There's no need to worry. Moreover, my wife's presence serves as a constant reminder that as her husband, I must put in effort to meet her needs without compromising my own health. Quietly, I observed his fingers in motion. With every addition, the florist paused, the discerning eye ensuring each flower found its perfect place in the arrangement. For a long, the florist turned his head to look at me. I apologize for making you wait. I'm always done. Almost done with the arrangement. <laughs> no, I feel like it's a bit rude. He said he has a wife. No, it actually is rude. He has a wife from work. Like, just completely flirting with him. I don't want a card. I want you instead. Flora smiled and shook his head, letting out a small chuckle. But his smile didn't quite reach his eyes. Your flirtatious behavior, as tedious as it is, reminds me of a time when my wife and I would share lighthearted moments. But I'm afraid this situation isn't one of them. He sighed softly and put on a wider smile again. I will be giving you the card then. What would you like me to write on it? Wow, he's blatantly ignoring me. I think I like some. <laughs> of course. Okay, yes, it's very much good enough for me. Oh. Um, should I ask? Yes, I'm curious about something else. Uh, what if I may ask about the handsome man behind the arrangement? You. <laughs> Flu's gonna kill us for the flirting. Pardon? He looks genuinely surprised at my question, clearly from how his eyes slightly widened. Flores fell silent for a moment, seemingly thinking for an answer or at a loss for words. You're quite the persistent one, I'll give you that. He sets down the scissors he was holding, walking over the counter to take a step closer to me. What exactly would you like to know about me then? Suddenly turned around and our eyes met. You know, before that, if I may ask something, what well, leads you to talk with me like that, keeping my marital status? I knew you were gonna be mad. I'm aware of that status, handsome. <laughs> Yet you chose not to care? Yeah, what if I don't care? Your personal life isn't my concern. He chuckles softly, the sound carrying a mix of amusement and something else, something deeper. Ah, his eyes met mine again. 
with a little more intensity this time. Are you perhaps one of those who find some sort of thrill in doing this? I decided to remain silent, but both because I'm not entirely sure on what I should say in turn, and also the fact that it seems like he was going to say something more. You're not the first to do this. He leaned forward, resting his elbows on the counter, as he tilted his head slightly to the side, maintaining eye contact. After all, it was nice how they honored me with their bodies in the end. Oh. <laughs> his eyes, I mean his words, slightly took me aback. I, hmm. He never faltering eye contact didn't help him make me less nervous. Cat got your tongue? Don't clam up now, you were doing so well. I suppose I should give your persistence a small reward. He leaned his back against the counter and looked at me in the eyes with intensity. To tell you the truth, my wife had a way of making ordinary and mundane moments exhilarating, much like the way our, convers our current conversation seems to be turning. He grinned as he said so, his eyes not leaving mine. Flores turned around and walked to the other side of the counter, tidying up some stuff. You're quite the curious one, aren't you? It's almost like you have no sense about his boundaries. He stopped his movement and turned around to face me. I'm just curious about understanding your bitter as a person, and maybe your wife as well. Um, uh, maybe I'm just drawn to you, you know what? I'm just drawn to you. He continued arranging items, his fingers briefly touching an old photograph resting nearby. I'm flattered. Though I'm afraid I don't quite get well, what you're trying to trying to get from the question. Flora's slender fingers wipes the dust off the photograph, revealing a picture of a sunflower garden. After a moment, he placed the photograph back where it was and met my gaze. Should I be wary of being in the presence of a detective? You're asking quite a handful of questions. He chuckled softly, looking over at me. Sorry, I should probably tune my curiosity. Tune down my curiosity. Flora's chuckle slowly turns into a warm smile. No, it's not every day I have someone show such genuine curiosity. I nod, appreciating his words. Yeah, your passion for flowers and the bond you share with your wife, they seem to hold a depth that goes beyond the surface. His movement halted for a moment, and his gaze becomes reflective, and he nods in agreement. You're perceptive. His check of phase as he returns his attention to tidying up his equipment. My gaze drifts to the sunflower frame photo that he touched earlier, and to his face. Can you tell me more about that photo? You know, watching you work with flowers earlier is really alluring to me. <laughs> You're quite the flattering one. I wonder if you like this with every stranger you met, or is it just me? He chuckled again, and this time a little more shallow as he shook his head and met my gaze. You remind me of a self-proclaimed protective that once came to visit me in hopes of sa sa satiating their curiosity. Needs to say I have no secrets to tell, so they're left with nothing. Is that so? Well, I'll be sure to remember that. Ah, uh, not another detective with good memory. That could be dangerous. His words were lighthearted this time, a somewhat playful smile graced his lips. I'm no detective, I just found myself drawn to you. Is that so? His eyes held a mischievous glint, and he leaned in even closer. Yes, you're quite intriguing. He trailed his fingers lightly along the edge of the counter. His eyes never leave mine. Well, in that case, perhaps I should let you in on a secret or two. The air between us seemed changed as our conversation continued. What's with this sudden change of behavior? Take a step back as he stepped forward to me. You must be thinking, what's with this sudden change of behavior? Well, yeah, I was wondering about exactly just that. What about all the talk about how much you love your wife until, until now? The florist let out a small chuckle at my words, shaking his head before he spoke in a quieter voice. Uh -huh. To love is to share, don't you think? Sometimes new flowers grow, even when we think we've already found our favorite. He sighed softly and met my gaze. Be enough about me. Let's focus on you for a moment. Me? I blinked in surprise, taken aback by the sudden rejection of the conversation. I've been persistent, for sure, no doubt about it. But the sudden change really took me aback. Yes, you. What really brings you to my flower shop today? Oh, um, I just saw the beautiful flowers in the window and decided to come in. I needed a really be good bouquet. And plus, this is the only flower shop that's still open, so... His pair of crimson eyes sparkle with a playful glint. Well, you have a good eye. Thank you. Though if I may assume, it does sound, seem like you had a change of mind sometime during the time you spent looking around in my shop. You did mention wanting to buy a bouquet for your friend's birthday earlier. 
I admire your initial urge to get out of your way to buy a flower bouquet this late at night. It's admirable. Most friends would have easily went home and slept, especially after a long day of work. But you didn't do that. You chose to come here. His words trailed off, coming quieter. I could feel myself getting increasingly nervous by each word spoken from him. Even though in the end, your desires got the better of you. Flora stepped away from the counter, walking to the other side of the shop, picked up a delicate white lily before holding it out to me. Look at this. White lily, a symbol of purity. Just like the intentions that initially led you to my shop. Is it wrong that I find you attractive, though? <laughs> the boy chuckled a bit before settling down the lily aside. I won't answer that for you. His gaze held mine for a moment longer than necessary, making me feel nervous. Are you finally re reciprocating my interest in you? Is that even a question? His voice dropped to a lower, more intimate tone. Let's not keep talking about me. We should continue our conversation somewhere else. My place is right below this floor. I don't realize that he actually lives in the same building. Though my nerves are on the edge, I nod in compliance with his offer. You know what? You're actually dumb. <laughs> Why do people just bring random strangers? Follow me then. With a gesture, he opened the staff door, room door. I could smell the sickening scent from earlier again the moment I stepped inside. I paused momentarily to gain my composure, contemplating should I continue to dwell deeper or not. Forrest noticed this and turned around to face me, his crimson eyes meeting mine. What's wrong? But no, I'm fine. He smiled at my words and turned around again, continuing, continuing to walk in silence. As he walked me down the stairs, my steps matched the rhythm of my racing heart. He passed by the dimly lit staff room that's shut closed. The scent of fresh blooms seemed to come from the other side of the place. Yes, the fluorescence still intertwined with the same unsettling aroma that had haunted my senses earlier. What if his wife is like a flower-human hybrid? I don't know, I keep thinking that. The florist stopped in his steps and opened the door, allowing me to step inside first. I don't know what this room is, but it's dimly lit. This is where we can continue our conversation. I nodded a mixture of anticipation and certainly bubbling within me. So, what has piqued your curiosity? You've shown quite the interest in me, but what is it that you really want to know? He leans in slightly, his gaze locked onto mine with an intensity that's difficult to ignore. Or perhaps I should ask, what is it that you desire from me? From all of this, I... My throat tightens as I swallow, filming his gaze like it feels a physical touch. You know your answer. You led yourself to this place, you see. I remained silent for a moment, not knowing what to say. Well, yeah, I want you. Let's just be straightforward. He chuckled softly, his eyes never leaving mine. You're quite the bold one. You see, I am fascinated by the intricacies of human nature, how desires drive us, mold us. But it's not just any desire that captures my attention. Take another step closer towards me. It's desires that lie hidden beneath the surface, the ones that make our hearts race, our thoughts spiral. Ones that drive us to irrational decisions. Ones that you seem to be experiencing at this very moment. His fingers trailed lightly along the edge of the table as he spoke softly. The desires that we bury deep within us. The turn and his truth in his words made my heart beat faster. And what do you want to do with those desires? He leans in a little closer, whispering into my ear. I cultivate them, nurture them, just like the flowers in my garden. And when the time is right, I let them bloom in all their glory. And now I think I've kept myself for too long at this point. He sweepily leaned back again, now a small frown in his face. You see, my wife was born in unique circumstances. But I've heard, but no man can escape their human desires, can they? He paused, his eyes searching mine as if debating whether to reveal something. I'm ashamed to admit this. But sometimes I find myself feeling a little lonely. That's why... Let's take a step towards understanding each other better, shall we? His smile is accompanied by a gentle touch on my arm. Fumito is my name. Fumito. Our eyes met, and now I can see a hint of vulnerability in his expression. Now that we know my name, why don't we continue our conversation in a more intimate setting? Intimate. With each of his, each of his words spoken made me increasingly more nervous. Yes, I have a proposition. Given the staff room is my place of work. Why not let me lead you to a different place? Uh, like the bedroom? <laughs> it's fine right here. <laughs> 
wait let me save um i like the bedroom he seems to be taken aback by my words for a moment but quickly regains composure my how bold of you or i suppose i should say eager i find my cheeks warming up by his words making me embarrassed by whatever he's implying uh, i mean i understand don't worry he was quick to silence me and put a finger over my lips to prevent me from speaking. The floor chuckled softly before leaning back again, holding his gaze with me. I will lead the way. Though, for talking in, talking in the bedroom, I do have a small request. Suddenly, his slender fingers moved towards me, and before I knew it, a soft fabric was draped over my eyes. What's this? My words catch my throat as I instinctively reach for the fabric. Shh. His touch on my wrist is gentle but firm. We're going to talk more intimately. This is simply a part of the thrill. I felt a mixture of incitement and unease as the fabric cut off my vision, wedging me into darkness. The forest voice seemed distant, as if he was guiding me through the shop. I trusted his lead, a sense of anticipation building within me. Before finally he came to a stop. Where are we? Yona? What? He calls out a name, showing no acknowledgement of my question. I will see you soon, my sunshine, just a little more. I can feel Fumito step closer in my direction as I reach for my face and remove the cloth from my eyes. As the world came back into focus, I found myself in a dimly lit room with cold tile floors. A strong metallic scent of blood permeated the air, accompanied by an unsettling mix of decay and flora notes, with some flowers at the forefront. Tall wooden shelves lined the walls, displaying an array of equipment and tools, their surfaces marred with ominous red stains. I told you it was a small request. Is your body ready? My heart pounds my chest as I try to make sense of the situation. What? I said, is your body ready? Please cooperate. What? In a flash, I had my arms yanked behind my back, securing them tightly with what felt like a rough twine. I immediately struggled against this hold, but it was futile. With an eerie hominess, Fumito dragged me to a nearby table before I could even react. Its surface feels sticky with a strange, moist sensation beneath my fingers. It felt gross, slightly wet, and I recoiled as my skin came to contact with it. His face was devoid of emotion as he secured my arms and legs to the table. Something about the way he handled, um, handled this tells me I had done such things before, his actions unnervingly precise. What are you doing? Once he tied the last knot, Fumito stepped back and looked down at me, his cold, crimson eyes boring into mine. Just keeping my promise, I'm a man of my word. He maintained his unsettling composure while I squirmed against my bounds. You wanted to honor me with your body, didn't you? He gave in to your desires without a second thought. Fully aware of my marital status, yet you still gave in. It's a weakness many seem to share. My heart raced and I tried to muster a response, but the words caught in my throat. Ugh. He reached for something on the nearby table, and the metallic clink of tools echoed through the dimly lit room. Um, do you even have a purpose for this? You're insane. Do you have a purpose? It seems to be slightly taken aback by my protest. I'm sleepily trying to provide for my beloved wife. Kamito suddenly climbed on the table and loomed on top of me. It's not clear that he's holding a piece of cloth in his hand. He leaned in closer, his voice dripping with mockery and thinly filled disgust. You're so shameless, aren't you? Always succumbing to your desire and never thinking of the consequences. He reached out to my face and slapped my cheek, the sound resonating in the room. Just like an animal. I could sense a deep seated disgust in his eyes, as if he loathed not only me but the very nature of humanity itself. It's getting late now, I can't waste any more time. My wife is waiting for me. I will make sure this ends quickly. You will soon forget those desires that led you here and any shame that comes with it, if you're even capable of that. Though I doubt you do. My vision begins to blur as he pressed the cloth against my face, soaked in something sweet-smelling. I wanted to respond to defy him, but the room seemed to grow darker, my eyelids heavy. Just close your eyes. The darkness closed in around me. I couldn't trick the feeling that the floor's disgust lingered, even as I drifted into unconsciousness. Put up an act like that was disgusting. No, I am in no way cheating. My sunshine, things goes, even though despise him. Father's teachings effective. My senses slowly returned, and I found myself in the same dimly lit room with the forest voice. 
I made those all the affectionate tone of speaking filled the air, but I couldn't quite grasp what he was saying properly. His voice is coming from somewhere nearby, like he was right beside me, but just out of my field of vision. My head felt hazy. I tried to move, but I couldn't feel my limbs. I realized something was very wrong. My arms and legs were unresponsive, as if they weren't even there. Uh -huh. Yes. But he was delicious, wasn't he, my dear? Flora's voice trailed off as their eyes met, realizing that I had awakened. Or at least, that's what I think. It's hard to see things properly. Uh, no, no, no. I can't have you awake for this. I attempted to turn my head and focus to see what, where I was and what had happened to me. But Fumito's presence loomed closer and his hand pressed against my forehead, stopping me. His touch felt strange, a little damp with the metallic scent hinting at blood in his fingers. My attempts to speak or struggle were feeble, my body unwilling to respond. I tried to speak and ask what was happening, but my words came out as a garbled murmur. My heart raced and I fought to regain my control over my body. Don't fight it, please. A sweet, sickly scent enveloped me once more and my vision quickly wavered. What a delectable offering you are. My wife's dinner tonight will be memorable. The last thing I heard was a florist's voice, distant and cold, tamed with a subtle disgust. Thank you for your contribution. That was on us, cause who does that? Ending yellow carnation. Ooh, I can't read cursor that well. In dalliance with words that wove a trance, one stumbled upon a perilous dance, an illusionary garden where charm was the key, a cautionary tale for all to see. A reckless fascination, wasn't it? Remember, not every connection is worth pursuing. Okay, I want to ask the florist about what that peculiar smell is. Um, is there a particular scent in here? It's quite unusual for a flower shop. He responded without even sparing me a glance. Ah, oh, yes, some customers notice it. He replied without even oh, a scent that many find to be calming. I see. And now as I speak, although the smell was far from calming to me. It's far from calming. What is it, really? Oh, I apologize. Is a lingering aroma bothering you? Flora's gaze seemed to shift as if contemplating something. Simply a blend of rare flowers I cultivate here. Coarse flowers, bleeding heart, and jade vines. Is there a reason for mixing them that way? Well, yes, it's based on my personal preference. His fingers definitely held the uh, bouquet paper, and I turned around to observe the other flowers. You'll get accustomed to the scent soon, I'm sure of it. Yeah, right. He looked up and our eyes locked. I turned around to the other side of the room to avoid his gaze. Only his oddly his gaze oddly fixated on me, as if tracing my every movement. Even as he added the final touches to the bouquet. I stayed silent and decided to focus on browsing the flowers, pushing aside the discomfort. Are you interested in adding anomums, perhaps? A timeless choice for various occasions. Red, pink, white, each shade conveying distinct meanings. Still mulling over it. I see. Very well then. His words faded into the background as then suddenly smell seemed to grow stronger. My unease had deepened with each passing moment. I I think I need some fresh air. Can I step outside while you finish? Of course, take your time. I'll continue working on the arrangement. And please, feel better soon. I nodded at his words and forced a grin on my face before swiftly turning around to leave the shop. Stepping outside, the fresh air did little to ease my anxiety. I couldn't shake off the feeling that there was something more to this flower shop than meet the eye. My instinct screamed at me to leave, but I couldn't abandon the mission. I took a deep breath, I contemplated whether to confront my fears and learn what's going on or just take this chance to leave. I felt like something isn't right here. Leave and buy the flowers somewhere else if I could, staying away for the bouquet no matter what. Um... No, we just leave. Yeah, it is unsettling. I can't really put into words exactly what's wrong, but something here generally doesn't feel right. After a moment of hesitation, I decided I've had enough. I re-entered the shop to see Floris remains in the same spot, still completely absorbed in his work. Sorry, right, maybe another time. Oh? I don't think I'll be uh, going back in here. Something definitely not right. The arrangement is beautiful, but I just got a text from a friend that they knew some other place. Without taking the time to wait for the florist's response, I closed the door shut and dashed away. As I make my escape, the haunting scent gradually fades and the night becomes quieter and more familiar. 
My heart begins to steady. I feel a sense of relief knowing I just escaped whatever that flower shop was. Ending Lily of the Valley. Oh, okay. Um, I'm gonna just stay and wait for it no matter what. Part of me wants to leave and forget about the whole thing, but another part of me can't help but be drawn back to this place. No, what am I thinking? I think I just could just be thinking too much into this whole thing. Right. Took a few more moments to calm myself down, think properly before eventually stepping outside the shop again. Besides, he arranged some of the most beautiful bouquets, bouquets I ever seen, at a reasonable price. When I step inside, he's unchanging. The floor is still as focused as ever at his flower arrangement. Feeling better? I think, think. Although my response clearly lacked enthusiasm, the floors appeared oblivious, wholly observed in his tax. It felt as if he were dismissing me. While he placed each pedal with precision, I hear suddenly hear a loud crashing noise coming from the other room. Okay. Um, why is she helping you? You need to look at yourself. It's concerning. You should remember to rest. I'm gonna say that's not from a nosebleed. That's definitely not from a nosebleed. I've seen nosebleeds before. They don't usually have leaf stains like that. He nodded slowly and smiled nonchalantly, a bit unfitting for the current tense situation. Ah, uh, why would you think so? I wouldn't lie about such matters. Though, may I remind you that respecting personal space and boundaries is essential when speaking with someone you don't know. His voice left me feeling a tad unease, but I didn't question it for now. Quietly, I observed his fingers in motion. With every addition, the floors paused, discerning eye ensuring each flower found its perfect place in the arrangement. Or along the floor, turned his head to look at me. I apologize for making you wait. I'm always done with the arrangement. Maybe something will change if I say, like, I don't want the card, I'll pass an offer. Once the flowers were perfectly arranged, he managed to carefully wrap the bouquet with decorated paper, colors and patterns complementing the flowers within. Okay, just have to add the finishing touch then. Do you want to purchase something else? Um, maybe? ask about his wife. Pardon? He looks genuinely surprised at my question, clearly from how his eyes slightly widen. I'm just curious about the person who inspired you to do such artistry. His expression softened at my confirmation, and he nodded slowly. Oh, I see. I'm flattered you want to know more about us. Well, my wife. She's a feisty, wonderful woman. Despite the way she's born, her uniqueness shines through. She has a delicate nature, that's by her strong and tall exterior. Which is why I won't let her work in the shop and nor help me directly, because I know she's helping me in her own way. That is as much as I can say about her. Something in his voice tells me he's not going to say anything more. I see, he seemed to treasure her so much. The florist nodded slowly, smiling in satisfaction. Of course I do, she's my everything. Afterwards, the florist turned around and walked to the other side of the counter, tidying up some stuff. Well then, I should prepare for closing now. If there's nothing else you need, perhaps it's time for you to be on your way too. The florist spoke in his usual soft tone, yet polite and firm. I'm past the usual closing time. Oh, I, I don't want to keep you. It's quite alright, I appreciate your interest in the shop. If you ever need flowers in the future, don't hesitate to drop by. Thank you for choosing Diona's flower shop. We will see you again soon. Holding the bouquet of flowers, I nodded while taking a last glance around the shop. Thanks as well. Uh, okay. As I distanced myself from the shop, the suddenly scent slowly faded, and the surrounding became more familiar and comforting. There's a faint inkling that I've forgotten something and it's bothering me. What could it be? Like, leave something at the shop? No, I don't think I left anything. Hmm. We will see you again. That's what he said. Ah, we. Wait. Ending. You don't know? The florist will find you next time. Find us? Oh, that's bad. <laughs> okay, so I chose the friend. I'm getting flowers for my friend, and we have sunflowers for our friend. I don't know why. I feel like sunflowers. Is such a weird choice to give someone or not? I don't know. So, why is your flower shop even remain openly until this late? Anyways. He didn't reply right away, and I noticed a slight pause in his movements as my question sank in. 
Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to pry. I understand where you're coming from. It is rather unusual for a flower shop to remain open this late. Truthfully, if it weren't for my beloved wife, I wouldn't be working this hard. While he remained focused on his work, a faint hint of pink now graced his cheeks as he spoke about his wife. He must really love his wife. I wouldn't want to see her. I see. You seem to be a hard worker. His wife must feel lucky. It's not every day you see someone this hard working nowadays. Thank you. He's my motivation for pursuing my love for flowers. He continued by picking up a handful of delicate baby's breasts, tiny white flowers that added the airy lightness to the bouquet. Did your wife influence your decision to become a florist? A soft chuckle accompanied his nod. Not entirely, but she's been a significant influence. My life with flowers has been a lifelong affair. Okay, I'm back here. So I'm going to say I'm very curious about him and his wife. I uh, Maybe we'll get to meet her. He continued arranging items, his fingers briefly touching an old photograph resting nearby. I'm flattered. Not many are willing to learn. Oh. The air about this changed. It's all lovey-dovey now. <laughs> the florist slender fingers wipes the dust off a photograph that's placed on his counter. Me and my beloved's life. His eyes held an affectionate look as he whispered softly, speaking of his wife. My wife, she's a fragile soul, born to circumstances that set her apart from the norm. What? I mean, and curi curious curiosity piqued my interest. Circumstances, what do you mean? She's born into circumstances that set her apart. His fingers brushed against the photograph, revealing an image of a sunflower garden, bathing the warm, nostalgic light. Yet, she is still a living embodiment of the beauty arising from adversary. Adversity. I met her in a garden back when I was much younger. As his gaze lingered on the photograph, his fingers seemed to caress the petals captured within the frame, as if reaching across time. Is his wife a flower? I liked it better when she was a flower. I think have a flower hybrid. <laughs> I see. It's a beautiful photo of some flower garden. Almost like straight up from a fairy tale. Long before I met her, they were my solace. Tending after flowers became a comfort to me. Almost like by fate. This passion of mine was what particularly led me into meeting the love of my life as well. He called me strange, something from laugh of my affinity for flowers. But my wife, when I met her, it was like the flowers finally had a voice. She helped me find solace in who I am and a purpose in life. He placed the photograph back in its place, and for a moment, silence hung in the air, laden with the unspoken sentiments. His gaze seemed to linger on the photo, lost in the world of memories. Sounds like she had a profound impact on her life. Indeed she did, in more ways than I can express. The forest crimson eyes hold a mixture of fondness and introspection. Um, your wife has... How has she influenced her life now? Let's see. That's this. In many ways, truly, she is my whole world. Her presence, even in her current state, inspires me to create the most exquisite arrangements. My wife has brought both joy and challenges to my life. See, she's no ordinary woman. She craves for something quite different. And I've made it my mission to provide her, for her, to ensure her happiness. I had to make certain sacrifices in doing so. Some people that knew, that knew, they often tell me to stop. But I never want to. It's her after all. She's my beloved wife, and I'll do whatever it takes to keep her content. I can see that. Deep down, I found myself contemplating a thing or two. I'm curious, I feel like I want to know more, but at the same time, should I? He isn't saying anything as he continues tidying things up. Does he not mind at all that I'm still standing here in his shop despite the arrangement now done? It's like he's not even acknowledged my presence at all. I cleared my throat, gathering my thoughts. Well, that's quite something. But I think I'll have to take my leave now. I wish you and your wife good fortune. I turned around and headed towards the door with a bouquet of flowers, ready to depart. You see, it's rare to find someone who understands my artistry and my situation. His words caught me off guard. I was taken aback by the depth of his statement. Your situation. He paused as if considering whether to say more. My wife, someone who's important in my life. The circumstances between me and her are unusual. That was my late father, like to put it. I listened intently. My curiosity peaked. Seems like he was opening up to me. He felt like a breath of fresh air to us. If I may be honest, not everyone takes the time to consider my circumstances. I see. Him suddenly speaking so much stopped me from leaving. The floor's words caught me off guard and I wasn't sure how to respond. I'm sure you're aware that people are so quick to judge, especially nowadays. 
they like to stick their noses in people's business, even relationships. So, <laughs> so it's rare to find someone who gen is genuinely willing to understand my situation. Do people shame me with the past? Um, sorry you had to deal with that. Don't be sorry. Humans tend to fear what they don't understand and hate what they can't conquer, simply in their nature to do so. That's why meeting someone like you who's opening, open to listening is quite refreshing. A brief silence enveloped us. His smile slowly is resurfacing whilst his fingers gently trace the petals of a nearby sunflower. As a parting gift, I'd like to offer you something special. His voice was tinged with genuine appreciation as he spoke. What? I want you to meet her. For a moment I struggled to speak. Meeting his wife? This is unexpected. But why? His smile broadens at my question. You've been so open to listening, that's why I believe you deserve to meet someone special, like my wife. I feel like you're the one of the people who would understand her nature. Not to mention, I'm sure my wife would like to know such a beautiful soul like you. Although it was not usual, I ended up agreeing, agreeing, my curiosity suppressing any doubts. I mean, if he's barely gassing her up like that, I'd have to be someone like that. <laughs> okay. The florid smile broadens in my response. Thank you. The florist led the way, opening the staff door for me to step in first. He guides me down a narrow flight of stairs, the air growing cooler as I descend into the earth, soft footsteps echo in a dimly lit space. The path seemed different now, a blend of shadows and flickering light. We passed by the dimly lit staff room, casting elongated shadows across the walls, but the scent of fresh blooms seemed to come from another place. That's the staff room, isn't it? Yes, you're correct. I followed the floors a little further until we both reach a sturdy wooden door. He turns to face me, a small smile gracing his lips. Here we are. Okay, it looks, looks normal. Uh, he opens the door to reveal what looks like an underground little greenhouse. It's kind of weird. Illuminated by a soft uh, red hued light. The air was thick with floral scents, and a hint of unpleasant smell similar to the one I first smelled when I went to the shop. He stepped aside and allowed me to step in first before him. Wait here for a moment, won't you? And not slowly, I saw a figure emerge from the shadows. My heart raced in anticipation. Fiona, my dear. Please look this way for a moment. Fiona's appearance was obscured, and I couldn't really make out any distinct shape for a moment. As the light illuminated the figure in a dim glow, I could finally perceive its features, if they could even be called that. What? Oh, your wife is so lovely. <laughs> I don't know what, I was kind of expecting like a tiny dainty flower. I was expecting a monstrous being, but no, he loves her and they love each other, so that's good. I couldn't believe what my eyes were seeing. Why he's been referring to all this time is this thing? Ooh. The monstrous being emitted a guttural brow, its massive head swaying ominously as its gnarled stem shifted with a creaking sound. What? From its gaping maw, a long, sinuous tongue emerged, dripping with a thick layer of glistening saliva. The sight was revolting, as if it were ready to strike at any moment. Nor in my shocking reaction, the forest displayed an unusual fondness for his life. Oh, I know you're eager, my lovely. Come closer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Give me a kiss, will you? As if in response to the floor's tender gestures, the monster reciprocated by licking his cheek with his tongue. Don't worry, my beloved. Our guest is here to stay. Stay? I just wanted to meet your wife, but I wasn't planning to stay. I was in shock as a grotesque creature, referred to as my lovely by the floor's, nuzzled against him. Before long, he slightly pulled away from the monster and met my gaze. Say hello to my dear. The monster's being faced me since its eerie, multicolored eyes. Hello? As I expected, she's pleased to meet you. The monster emitted another low growl, akin to a purring noise, its form quivering slightly as if responding to the forest's name words. This, this can't be real. The florist tenderly strokes the rough surface of the monster's petals. With each caress, the monster's form seems to writhe with anticipation. I must apologize for my absence earlier. 
We only have to take care of our guests, especially those with curiosity. Huh? Are you talking about me? You see, my lovely here was quite impatient with your presence. She's been famished for weeks, and the sound of unfamiliar footsteps was driven her to a frenzy. I found myself connecting the thoughts in my head. Flora's earlier repeated visit to the staff room, his hurried demeanor, it all makes sense now. The monster and his wife have been starving. Now I understand the reason behind his earlier disappearances. But don't worry, I taught her well, and you're safe with me. How could he say that? I don't feel safe at all. My heart raced with the knees, realizing that Flora's true nature and the monster's being has been referring to as his beloved wife. Would you like to shake your hand? She's always excited to meet new faces. Flores reached towards the creature's petals, almost resembling a hand, shifting in its mind direction. <laughs> I mean, you kinda have to, right? I don't wanna be rude. So, let's say okay, yes. I still look back, and my heart pounding as I continue to grapple with the reality of the situation. Despite so, I fought back everything in me to run away, and instead stepped closer to the monstrous, monstrous creature before me. As I stepped closer, I could feel the heat emanating from it. Hello, Diona. Nice to meet you. I reached my hand out to caress its large, little petals. They definitely feel much rougher than usual sunflower petals, much thicker and stiff. Unlike when the floors touched it, the monster didn't seem to react to my tensions as it did with him. While I caress its petals, the floor stands there, remaining close to the monster he calls his wife, watching my every move. Isn't she gorgeous? Um, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Especially for your inner instance, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's gorgeous, man. Flora smiled, nodding slowly. I knew you'd think so. I stepped back and put my hand aside from the monster, as if not wanting me to touch it even more. His grip was firm as he moved my hand away. She's a type of carnivorous sunflower. Flora's gaze returned to the creature, and the expression displaying fondness for his wife. As I mentioned earlier, I encountered her in the garden when I was younger. Probably when I was around 10 years old. We practically grew up side by side, facing all kinds of ta challenges together. Once again, his attention shifted towards me. Back then, Diana was just the size of a normal sunflower. At that point, her diet mostly consisted of small animals. Though it wasn't until she nibbled on my ring finger that I truly understood her appetite for flesh. It's alright though, the moment marked the beginning of our bond. Isn't that it? His words took a moment to sink in. My eyes immediately trailed to the floor's hand, and only then did I realize one of his ring fingers is missing. Oh, I wish there was that too. <laughs> you didn't nibble, she ate it. There's a metaphorical saying that couples should savor each other's flavors before walking down the aisle. This couldn't be real. How could he be married to such a being? In our case, that saying takes on a rather little meaning. But don't be alarmed, Diana had her fair share of snacks this evening already. Though I must tell you that she has quite the appetite. He delivered this assurance with a faint smile that only fueled my unease. Right, my sunshine? It's kinda cute how they love each other. <laughs> she tends to get a bit bashful whenever I mention her hearty appetite. Can I ask a few questions about her? What kind of snack does she had? I raised an eyebrow curiosity lacing my words. He momentarily turned to look at me, his expression unreadable. Just a little feline. Feline? The way he answered such a calm tone slightly took me aback. I see. I muttered in response, not wanting to pry any further. The floors and the monster continued with their unsettling display of affection, completely ignoring my presence. Ah, could you repeat that for me, my beloved? But I'm not lying, my sweet. It's merely a part of the plan. What? It's just how things go. It's always been. A displeased growl of the monster's mouth is discontent evident in the deep rumble that emanated from its throat. My wife, please understand. Be a little more patient for me, okay? I'll spoil you well tonight. I miss spending time with you. Perfect. Me too. Man, are you serious? My wife said she'd like to eat you. His gaze swiftly shifted to me, his demeanor now devoid of any emotion, complete 180 from how he interacted with the monster mere moments ago. I would run. This is your chance to run. I apologize, let me rephrase that. His words hit me like a shockwave. 
She would like to get to know you through her taste buds. Yep, this is where I should leave. <laughs> Run! I dashed towards the door as quickly as possible, but then he was suddenly behind, behind me, his tone soft yet sinister. My wife has been starving for a while, and you're the perfect target. Fear gripped me, realizing you crashing over me in waves. It's quite rude to leave when you, a guest, is being introduced, don't you think? I heard the gnome bears go out my way to step into a totally not suspicious flower shop that's apparently still open past 11 at night. Let me leave. I tried yanking his wrist once more, attempting to break free, and dashed upstairs, but a sharp pain suddenly thrust my side, causing me to lose my balance. I'm afraid I cannot allow that. The forest lizards pierced me. My wife would hate knowing that someone like you entered our shop. I didn't get to be part of her feast. In agony, I curled up into a ball on the ground. The floors approached me, stabbing my neck for the third time. Ugh! I screamed in pain, blood mixing with my coughs. Throughout it all, the floors stared, motionless eyes fixed on me, holding my wrist before dragging me. Let go of me! I'm in no position to decide that. Please do ask my wife. He held me firmly, dragging me closer to where his wife awaited. Ugh! The proximity to the repulsive creature made my stomach churn. I can almost feel the heart heat radiating from its body. Do you think you enjoy tonight's meal, my sunshine? If not, I was simply dispose of this slab. The monster unhinged his jaw and his tongue flowing out to lick my face. I recoiled in disgust, its hot saliva staining my cheek. My sunshine, I warn you repeatedly not to do that. It's unbearable to see, as if you were kissing them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what the hell did he just say? I glanced at him with a flurry of emotions within me, sensing my arms and legs being bound tightly. Now I must prepare you for her meal. The monster growled again, slowly reacting to the forest's words, lowering its head before glaring at us. Oh, I was just a little jealous, but I'm not upset with you, dear. The forest rose and walked ahead of me, caressing the monster's stem as it leaned into his touch. In the midst of me struggling, I could smell something unpleasant coming from somewhere, the unpleasant scent from earlier. It smells so foul I can feel it's insulting my senses. Don't worry, my sunshine. I'll chop them up for you. Huh? After a moment, both the floors and the monster seized their affectionate gestures and turned their attention to me. He immediately yanked me and dragged me to another room. A wash and dim blue light. The unpleasant smell intensified as we inched closer to our destination. I realized this room was one of the rooms the staff door led to. Let me go! Keep your mouth shut and I'll make this easy for you. We turned around and left to retrieve some items from the tall cabinet. Flores retrieved his huge gardening shears. Suddenly, the foul smell intensified, assaulting my senses. As he turned on one of the lights, I realized a door emanating from behind the door. He creaked open slightly, revealing a horrifying sight, a pile of human bodies. Some were covered in dirt, while others were soaked in blood. Instinctively, I attempted to flee, only to be reminded of my restrained strained limbs. Damn. The fresher the meat, the better the taste. Troy's trying to lunge at me. Why are you doing this? Uh, can we save ourselves, really? I don't think we can save ourselves no more. Um. Uh. Why are you doing this? You don't have to do this. I noticed the florist's eyes briefly widened at my words. My outburst appeared to catch him off guard. What the heck? I did do that. Ah, even a toddler could grasp that. He sighed, locking his crimson eyes onto mine. Clearly, it's because I need to feed my wife. Can't you understand her circumstances? It's how she was born. Disgust flickered across his features, expression contorting. I assumed you might grasp it to some extent. I seem to have been mistaken. He gripped onto his gardening shears in advance, piercing my lower stomach. Ah! I screamed in pain, desperate to hold and staunch the wound, but my restraints prevented me. You're not being very cooperative. He dragged me once again to, to right in front of the monster's face. Now this will be quick. No. My wife? The monster responded with a growl, turning its head towards the florist. Each time he talks to that creature, his voice takes on a softer, more gentle tone. I hate to ask, but could you assist me, my dear? It's not cooperating very well. The monster let out another growl, even louder this time. He craned his neck downward and then extended its tongue in my direction. Ah, so you're eager to devour it immediately? I understand. 
However, I'm just concerned that you might choke again like the last time. So I couldn't let you devour it right away, but you're allowed to help. You're very lovely, my sunshine. This is some lover of the Lulu that I've never seen before. <laughs> now be still, will you? The monster turned to look at me and leaned closer to my face. Instinctively, I flinched and tried to avoid it. What is it trying to do? I told you earlier. <laughs> oh, and we're dead. I should have never been curious. Oh, we're still alive? The pain is unbearable as I feel the monster chewing on me. Ah, delicious, isn't it? If you seem to be quite enjoying it, my beloved. I'm relieved to see. Thank you for your contribution. Flora's cold, distant voice was the last thing I heard when I drew my last breath. Ending... Diona, Sunflower. Like sunflowers to the sun, the curious heart beckons towards the light. Yet, your fate took its, uh, wandering bend? Did you dare pluck the flower of truth at the cost of your own petals? Yes, I did. Oh. oh God. I feel like this shouldn't be curious, but like, no one's gonna expect their the wife to be a huge sunflower like that. Okay, so I think I got all the endings, and that is the end of Diana's flower shop. Um. I don't know why. Why do I feel like Diana, like. I don't know, somehow, like, captured him or enraptured him or something, like, to make it the point that he's so obsessed with her that he'll do anything that she asks for. And it seems like he's always, like, being, like, he's suspicious of, like, uh, killing people because he's mentioning, like, us being a detective, so it seems like the police are onto him that he's murdering people and whatnot. Obviously, he, I mean, he can't keep this up forever. People are gonna find out one day that he has a huge monster sunflower beneath, um, his uh, shop, and it seems like his family knew, his father knew, especially. I'm not really sure. I do like his dedication and love for her, not gonna lie, I like that. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video, bye!